Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Poor Man's Guide to Building a Food Truck. Today, we're gonna to be going through this bad boy right behind me. This is my 1995 Ford F-150. I'm gonna go through a couple things with you guys. So you may be looking at buying a truck in order to pull your new business, your rolling kitchen. So, let's get into it. And this is the machine that's gonna be pulling my business once I get the food truck built and it's up and running. So, you're probably thinking, why are we talking about this? Well, if you're anything like me and you maybe didn't have a truck in the first place, you're gonna need one or you're gonna need a big vehicle in order to pull your uh, food trailer. So um, you don't necessarily need a pickup truck, you know, a, a heavy duty SUV will do it. But me personally, I had a small sedan uh, before and I was yeah, a small sedan isn't gonna cut it. So um, I'm gonna be going through a couple of things here for you guys and tell you a little bit about my purchase, uh, how it went and maybe what you guys can expect as well. The first thing that I'll tell you is I looked for a long time for this truck. Uh, I probably looked for about five or six weeks constantly every single day looking um, looking on Facebook Marketplace, looking online um, to try and get a really good deal. I will say that persistence is key, uh, patience is key. Don't jump into something just for the sake of doing it. And I'm gonna talk you through a little bit about something that happened to me and why the kind of the stars align for me uh, into purchasing this one. So the biggest question that everybody's gonna have and really the only one that anybody's gonna care about is how much did I pay for it? I paid $2,800 for this truck. It only had 82,000 miles on it when I purchased it. Original miles, 82,000, $2,800. It was a steal. And let me talk to you about a little bit about how it came to be. So this truck originally belonged to a doctor who uh, she was going through a separation or whatever with her husband. The truck was actually his, but it was in her name. So she was the one that was selling it. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. She was just wanted to get rid of it. Um, she didn't want the memories or whatever. So as soon as I saw this thing drop on Facebook Marketplace within an hour, um, I was there. I was at the house and I was viewing the truck. So I had the money ready to go. Um, I managed to talk them down a little bit, but bottom line, she wanted it gone so bad that she settled for $2,800 for it. So I took it that day, gave her the cash, um, and away we went. So, but prior to that, and this is why I wanna to talk to you guys about patience, prior to that, I was already in the process of purchasing a truck for a lot more money. I was actually about to spend over $4,000 um, for a Chevy Silverado, it was a 2005, so it was a little bit newer, but it had 180,000 miles on it. it, had a lot more miles on it. It was a good truck but I was in the final stages of, of going ahead and purchasing it. I actually already re had the money ready to go. And I just happened to that day, go on again. I'm like, you know what? I just want to look one more time. And I found this and it had dropped on Facebook Marketplace just at an hour prior. So I was like, you know what? Before I go ahead and I spend this four grand, let me go check out this truck because it was listed at 80,000 miles. And I'm like, dang, for a 95, that is crazy. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's just a rust bucket or whatever. I get there open it up and it's clean and you can tell that it's been looked after it's been kept in a garage for sure um it's bright green and it looks like the hulk but you know what can you do beggars can't be choosers right and then as soon as i opened the inside which i'll show you guys in just a second i saw how well maintained it was which is always a good sign when you're purchasing a used vehicle if you look at the inside the you know you can tell it's been maintained especially these old trucks that you know they're supposed to be work trucks, right? They're supposed to be beat up. But if you can get in one and you can see that it's been well maintained, that's usually a good indicator as to, okay, well, this person probably took good care of it. So, um, jumping back, I went ahead and I purchased it right there and then. And then um, I didn't obviously end up buying that Silverado, which I was gonna spend a lot more money on, which had a lot more miles on it. So, be patient. That's the first thing that I'll say. So let me go ahead and show you guys the inside and I'll talk a little bit more about why it's important um, to have one of these. So obviously one of the first things is checking under the hood, which I did right away. Make sure that you take it for a test drive, of course. If anyone's skeptical about you taking it for a test drive, that's a red flag right there. Um, <clears throat> another good giveaway for me was that as soon as I said I wanted to drive it, they gave me the keys. 
let me take it by myself you know didn't tag along for it didn't you know try to say hey you know make it quick or whatever there she was like you know take it as long as you need it um you know i just gave her my driving license as a courtesy um but she didn't even ask for that so you know that's a usually a good indicator as well but for a 95 again you can see i've seen a lot newer and a lot worse uh shape so the only thing that i had to do was uh replace the radiator cap um they taken it off-road a little bit so it was you know had some gunk and stuff up in the grill and in the radiator so it wasn't um you know flowing through the system properly but that was about it i mean i changed the fluids uh you know changed the oil myself flushed the radiator um, i noticed that it was losing coolant so i managed to troubleshoot it a little bit myself you know again <laughs> try to save money i'm not going to take it to a mechanic when i can try and figure it out so found out that it was just a faulty radiator cap uh, which is right there you can see it's bright silver it's new um that's the only thing that i've had wrong with it and i've had this truck now for i don't know four or five months maybe and knock on wood haven't had a single problem with it so um that was the only problem is that it was losing coolant couldn't figure out where it's coming from there's nothing leaking you know from anywhere and i found out there was a uh, just a bad radio to cap so switched it out cost me like five or six bucks from AutoZone. And it's been great ever since so there we go let's take a look at the inside so you have to excuse my mess for just a moment um and i have my son's car seat in there let me tell you my my son absolutely loves this thing um but one of the big indicators for me is i noticed that they had these seat covers on it and she had told me that her husband kept these seat covers on it since he had it back in 1995 there was only one owner that was another big thing uh, which is usually a great indicator if there's just one owner and you can see this one well maintained you're probably onto a winner and i noticed that once i pulled these seat covers off the leather is just in incredible condition for the year i've actually pulled the whole seat cover off and the leather looks brand new so again great indicator for me and the reason I'm going through all this with you guys is that maybe you're in a similar situation to me where you just have a small car that's not capable of pulling something big like this, a 7x16 trailer, and you need something that can do the job for you. So you got to have something sturdy, something reliable that you know is going to get the job done and it's not going to let you down. So um, <clears throat> with this one in particular, like I said, it had 82,000 miles on it when I purchased it. I bought it for 2,800 bucks. I'm still kind of in disbelief about it to be perfectly honest with you but like i said at the start of the video patience was the key you know try not to jump into it me purchasing that other vehicle and then this one showing up is just a sign for me that you know that other one wasn't meant to be you know this was this was the one that i needed to get so um as long obviously as you maintain it take care of it um it'll it'll treat you good these older trucks like these are these uh, mid to late 90s trucks especially by ford they built them really well they really don't build them like this anymore so um if you can get if you can get into one of those they'll do the job for you like i said if you take care of it it'll take care of you keep the fluids changed keep it keep it up to date with its maintenance and it'll treat you golden the final thing that i want to talk about is you know, you guys may be in a situation where, you know, like me lost not long ago, they didn't have 2,800 bucks uh, to drop on a car. So something that might work for you, I'm not going to recommend it because debt's never good. But instead of going to these buy here, pay here places, instead of going to, you know, some of these sketchy places that you can pick up cars and they'll die on you a couple of weeks down the line. Maybe look into doing a lot of the research yourself. That's something that I'm all about is doing everything yourself, doing your background work, and, and, and it can pay off for you. So something that might work for you, and again, I'm not going to recommend it, but something that might work for you, instead of going to one of those places that are buy here, pay here, or go into a bank or a credit union that might charge you out the butt for interest, take a look at these online personal loans. Um, it's something that I've used in the past. Um, a couple of them I've used uh, Upstart, which was really good for me. Upstart.com, they're like an online um, lender. They have typically they have good rates for people that maybe their credit's not great. Um, you know, it's not in the in the toilet, but you know, it's not great. Where you might struggle to get one with a bank or with a credit union, and if you do get one with a bank or credit union, they'll charge you, like I said, at the butt for interest. These online lenders tend to have better rates. At least they did when I was researching it. So something that might work for you is going to one of these places, 
I can't speak for all of them, but like I said, I've used Upstart, upstart.com. I've used those guys before and they were great. I actually paid my loan off early uh, from when I sold my Mazda, paid that loan off. There was no early fee. Uh, there was no hidden charges or anything like that. They were great. So you could maybe look into something like that, taking out a personal loan and use that to purchase a car in cash, in theory. And then you have a lower monthly payment over the next two, three years or whatever the loan terms are. So that might be a feasible option for some of you guys that, that are out there that, that maybe don't have the cash up front. Don't think that your options are limited. You know, you gotta to go to a bank or you have to go to a buy here, pay here, or you know, you're, you're really restricted because of maybe your bad credit history or your bad financial situation. Maybe just do your research online. Nerd Wallet is a good website to use as well. The good comparison website. Um, to maybe you could pick up something for just a couple of thousand and then pay it off as you know a low monthly payment maybe a hundred bucks a month something like that I don't know where um, you're not being charged at the butt for interest and if you do happen to come into money later down the line you can pay it off early and they're not gonna try and rip you off because you're paying it off early so that might work for you guys one more time I'm not gonna recommend it because it's debt that's not good but if your hands are tied it could be a viable option for you and that's all I have for today's video, guys. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe. Any questions or, or comments about the video today, please leave them right down below. Uh, I'd love to hear you guys' feedback. You guys have been so great so far. I am still new to it. So thank you for all of the patience. And until next time, cheers.